coming up. How did you up? become gay? That's a great question. At a very young age, my brother, who's a year older than I am, he and I, uh, well, he had a friend who lived, a neighbor. He invited us over and showed us his father's Playboy magazines. Mm -hmm. So my first, it was my first introduction into pornography, into sexuality. So it was very shocking. It kind of unlocked this lust in me. And, but there was nowhere for me to put the lust. <laughs> but since I was around guys all the time in my uh -huh. class, that's where the lust was directed. Oh, I see. And then when I was nine years old, I was, I, I woke up, I spent the night at a friend's house from my school, and I woke up in the middle of the night and his father was molesting me. Oh. How did you become gay? That's a great question. Um, so, there's different theories on why, obviously, you know, there's, there's the genetic, there's environmental, there's hormonal in utero. And um, I don't know what parts of those affected me, but at a very young age, my brother, who's a year older than I am, he and I, uh, well, he had a friend who lived, a neighbor. And he invited, he, he, I think we were like in third grade or younger. He invited us over and showed us his father's Playboy magazines. Mm -hmm. So my first, it was my first introduction into pornography, into sexuality. So it was very shocking to yeah, me. The, these images were really, really shocking. And it's, but see, it didn't happen to my brother. So I don't know if this is the cause, but. What for me, it kind of unlocked this lust in me, and but there was nowhere for me to put the lust. <laughs> but since I was around guys all the time in my uh -huh. class, that's where the lust was directed. Oh, I see. And then when I was nine years old, I was, I I woke up. I was spent the night at a friend's house from my school, and I woke up in the middle of the night, and his father was molesting me. Oh, so amazing. that that was a huge. I think that was like the turn, a major turning point for me. Because I think before that, I think I could have gone either direction, but right. that experience, I think, really, you know, shifted me into into we, homosexuality. Um, and so, when you think of that now, what do you think about? How do you feel about that? About that night. Uh -huh. Um, I think it, well, the thing is, before I was a Christian, I thought, you know, that night was no, not a big deal. I was kind of like, oh, it was no big deal. After I became a Christian, I, I now look back on that night as very traumatic. And because it was, um, it was the first thought in my mind when I woke up to him molesting me was, if, I, if he knows I'm awake, he's going to kill me. I thought he was going to, I, I had this image in my mind of him stabbing me yeah. with a knife. And so that, now I understand that that night ha, was very uh, destructive. Are you over that now? I, I don't know. I mean, I think I've, I've been prayed, I've gone to my pastors many times and prayed about it. And, and I think I am, but I mean, um, I don't know. I, I, I think I am. Who were you closest to growing up, your father or your mother? My mother. Your mother. We were like best friends. Really? Yeah. Growing up, you were your mother's best friend. I was her, I was like her surrogate husband. Wow. Bird, well, how did that feel? What was that like for you? See, well, because my father was, um, he was busy working all the time. And, you know, he... And so my mother turned to me a lot for kind of comfort. Yeah. And it was like, it was it literally, it felt like I was her kind of second, her con second, secondary concubine or whatever it's <laughs> called. And um, so it, it, it had this weird feeling of, it was a codependent relationship, but, yeah. but it was, I, I enjoyed it because I liked being needed by my mother 
So it was kind of this really messy relationship. Did you, how did you feel about it when you first realized what she was doing? Did you like it then, or you just came to like it? Um, I didn't really kind of, it took me a long time until I was an adult to understand what, how, what the relationship was, but yeah. that it was super codependent. But, um, yeah, but I, I, liked, I liked the fact that she loved me so much and that she relied on me so much and needed me so much. I liked being needed. I mean, who doesn't want to be needed by their mother? You know, it's that kind of thing. <laughs> and so I, I liked our relationship, you know, growing that, up. Did, did you sleep with her while growing up? No. You never slept in the same bed with her? No. And did it feel like a trauma when she was doing that? You didn't want her to make her that, to be that close to her in the beginning? No, no. It just felt like my mother was a very sensitive yeah. human being. I know what you mean. Very, very sensitive. And I was very sensitive as a little boy, and so we connected on that. So you became like her? Yeah. And are you surprised you became like your mother? Not now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not surprised by that. And so did you forgive her for doing that to you? No, I haven't. Why not? I just, I haven't thought of doing it. Now that you're thinking of it, do you think you need to forgive her for that? Probably. Because what happens is mothers, when they do that to their children, they impose their will upon their children. And when you're a kid, you resent it at first. And then when you resent it, you become like what you resent. You take on her identity, the same spirit to her, and now in you. So it feels like it's okay after a while, right? Yeah. But she really created your, her image. And that can have a lot to do with you feeling that you were gay yeah. because you had the woman's spirit rather than the father's spirit. Yeah, so I, I guess I do need to forgive her. <laughs> yeah. And then that way God will forgive you and you'll be free forever. Because yeah. you were never a homosexual. You just took on the woman's identity. And it felt that way. Yeah. The I mindset and the emotion and stuff that come with it. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that had a lot to do with it. Amazing, huh? Yeah. Because we are a spirit and everything we do is spiritual. And I know so many mothers around the world who have imposed their will upon their children and created them in their image. They have turned them away from the father. Mm -hmm. And when you turn the children away from the earthly father, you turn them away from God. And you take on the woman's identity, right? And so if you don't love your earthly father, you cannot love God because men represent God. We are sons of God, even in a fallen state, we've just been turned away from yeah. it. And my, and my father, I had my relationship with my dad was very minimal. Yeah. We barely spoke to each other. Yeah. Your mother didn't want you to. She made sure you didn't. <laughs> Maybe. You might be right. I like the insight. You like it? Yeah. You can see where I'm, talk where I'm yeah. coming from? Really? Yeah. Nice. And so now that you see it, will you go and forgive her for what she's done so God can forgive you? Yes. Oh, good. I will. And she might not like it. She might try to deny it and all that. But just, you know how God said... Well, she's in heaven, so I can't talk oh, to her right good. now. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. in heaven, I'll talk to her about it. But, <laughs> but well, I, I will forgive her. Yeah. I do forgive her. Because she couldn't help her. Her mother did it to her, too. And it goes on from generation to generation. Yeah. She became like her mother. Yeah. Um, and so... Just, you realize you, I'm not, you're not a homosexual anymore... Were you a radical homosexual at any point? No, I was never super... I wasn't like an activist. Oh, good. Okay. No, no, no. What, I mean, I did go to gay pride parades in New York, L.A., San Francisco. I yeah. went to all... You know, I, used, I would go to gay bars all the time with my friends. Right. And, but I was never like a militant gay guy. Nice. Um, what was your impression of the radical ones? The militant ones, the activist ones, and impose themselves on the rest of the world? I just thought it was in bad taste. <laughs> You know, when I, would, when I would go to these gay pride parades and there would be kind of like ha naked men yeah. basically on floats dancing and like, I just, my friend, all my friends, we would just be like, oh, this is ridiculous. Like, what are they doing? Yeah. So I, I never kind of bought into that whole extreme part of it. What caused them to go that deep into where they are on, on the float naked and in front of children and everything? What causes that? Um, the fallen state. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I think it's just a, it's this re very kind of rebellious heart. Um, it's a, 
I think what what causes it is as kids, a lot of those guys were you know bullied or made fun of yeah. for being gay or whatever, yeah. and like this is now this is the rage that's coming out you know of them. Like literally, there's a gay bar in West Hollywood called the Rage. Do oh, you know yeah. that? <laughs> no. Do you know that? It's been there since the '80s. Yeah, but there's this rage uh, because because of you know what they experienced in their childhood, and I know a lot of guys who who even now I know friends of mine create TV shows that are gay themed they're old friends of mine they create TV shows that on Netflix that are all gay characters or yeah. a lot of gay characters yeah. and those those guys were bullied as when they were in high, well, high school oh, okay. as uh, as gay guys they were bullied and so now this is kind of like almost like their revenge, you know, yeah. on, on the culture. And so, uh, and they're, and right now in culture, as we all know, they're getting the last laugh right? because the, uh, the culture is all in. It's all know. in now. It's all in. Yeah. What is the way for the, to overcome that, uh, the Christian world and the straight world, how can they overcome what has happened to them now? The homosexuals are all in they, they have influence over everything, the media and everything. The gospel. How can Christians overcome that? How can Christians overcome it? I mean, yeah, overcome that influence that these people are having on their children, yeah. on society at large. Um, here's the thing. The, the, what Christians, I think a lot of the church, a lot of Christians are unaware of the cultural indoctrination that's been going on for 60 years yeah. since the sexual revolution. There and and how all of kind of our beliefs and background kind of thoughts and beliefs about things are so influenced by years and years of Will and Grace, Sex and the City, all these TV shows, all these movies, all this. And so, what I say to people when to Christians is, if you watch Netflix for an hour, you've been lied to implicitly or explicitly for an hour. So yeah. now you need the truth, which is the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, because yeah. we're in a spiritual battle. This is spiritual warfare. You need, you've just been lied to, and you've, you've watched secular humanist content that has been created from people in the dark. So all the content on, on TV is created from people in the dark. Absolutely, man. So Absolutely. you need to, to so if you're, if you're going to expose yourself to that, you need to get into the Word of God and, be, and renew your mind and remember the truth and, and read the New Testament, read the, the epistles of the New Testament and be, like, and be reminded of like, I just, you know, it's funny, I'll, I was doing the dishes the other day and just listening to 1 Corinthians and I was like, you know, it got to 1 Corinthians 6 where Paul says, do not be deceived, you know, the, uh, uh, men who practice homosexuality will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I was just listening to that and I've read First Corinthians many, many times, but it's just like I'm surprised that this book is still even legal in California. <laughs> like yeah. I'm, I'm surprised yeah. it hasn't been banned. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. I think uh, Christians, as we we need to constantly be in the Word of God and constantly reminded of the truth because we're we're being lied to. 24 7 by the culture and we will be for the rest of our lives yeah. and jesus said this kingdom my kingdom is not of this world right so we cannot imbibe what this world is offering because th that's not his kingdom this, this world the kingdom of this world is, is satan amazing <laughs>